So I wanted to do a brief comparison, uh, not an exhaustive one by any means, uh, of two calculators that are very popular for the PE and the FE, and they're both very good calculators, but also very different. Now the HP 35 is primarily a reverse Polish notation calculator, while the 36 Pro is the infix or algebraic notation. Now you can do algebraic on the HP 35S, but I honestly don't think it's very good. If I were to enter 4 times 5 plus 6, I can do that. But as soon as I enter another calculation, my previous one is gone, and I can't go back and edit this. It actually would take me into the stepping through the programs. So I can't edit my equation here, whereas on the 36 uh, Pro, I can. I can go back and grab that, and then I can change that to a, a 4, or maybe I wanted to do a minus there. Oh, that's another thing. It defaults to a uh, replace cursor, and if you want to insert something, then you have to do second and then insert. So anyways, this gives you much more space for your calculations, and you can go back and grab previous calculations or see what you did, maybe correct a mistake that was entered in previously. So as far as algebraic goes, this is definitely superior. But most people don't use the 35S for algebraic. They use it for reverse Polish notation. So a couple of uh, things you can do on both. Uh, integration. Now the 36 Pro, well let me just talk about just general functions first. So you can enter in fractions on both for the 35S. If you wanted to do 1 and 3 quarters, I would do 1.3.4. And if I hit enter, it would show me the, the decimal value, but I can also go to fraction display here and show my answers as a fraction within limits. It doesn't have very high precision. The 36 Pro, you would enter your fractions in a very much a graphical mode. So I could do it that, or just hit the fraction button. So for here, I would do one and three quarter. Now some people may like this. Um, it is very intuitive, you can figure it out quickly, but it does tend to take longer doing a graphical presentation. So same thing for if I want to do the reciprocal of something. Hit enter and I've got four sevens. Whereas here I can hit the reciprocal, one over x, and I get four sevens. They both have base conversion. Let me get that a fraction display. So if I want to switch, well, let's enter in five, and I want to switch bases to binary, I can switch over to that. Do the same thing over here. Uh, switch to base, to binary, hit enter, I get the same answer. But again, notice this is much more menu-based and graphically based. And do conversions. Now here, the 36X really does a really good job of all kinds of conversions. It gives you this menu. You can go drill down through each menu. So do I want to convert from, let's say I want to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And I get 212. The HP 35S also has a few conversions, but far fewer. Uh, but they are more uh, intuitive or easy to use. So if I wanted to do the same thing, well, let me switch my base real quick. Make the decimal. I wanted to convert 100 uh, to Fahrenheit. Do the gold shift and then to Fahrenheit. I get my answer. So there's a very quick set of conversions here, but it is fairly limited. Constants. 
Again, the 36 uh, X Pro does a really good job with the constants. It gives you the name as well as the symbol. Whereas the HP 35S just gives you the symbol. Now they both have quite a few constants, but it is helpful having that that name. This shows you the value, so I, I, if you are familiar with that constant, most likely you'll be familiar with that value as well. Yeah, this doesn't have as many, but it does have the names there. And then units, you can use units in your calculations, which the 35S does not have, but this takes so long to do that I don't know how helpful it really is. If you really wanted to check that your units cancel, it might be helpful, but in an exam situation, I just can't see doing that. <clears throat> All right, so solver. We have in the HP 35S, you can enter something like this. So the roots of that equation are going to be uh, positive 3 minus 1. <clears throat> And this uses, well, if you use the built-in solver, <clears throat> then it uses what's in the X register as its initial guess. So if I go here, solve for X, it tells me that X is one. Hmm. The polysolve here is what would be more useful. So you've got the ax squared plus bx plus c and the quadratic well I've actually entered a quadratic uh, program here and that is the nice thing about the HP 35s is you can program things but it it does seem to lack on a lot of the built-in functions that you would expect from a programmable calculator so I'm going to execute my quadratic which is under Q and ask me for a uh, we're doing the x squared plus 2x minus 3. So a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 3. Negative 3. Hit solve over here. I hit run stop over here, and these are my two roots, is 1 and negative 3, and over here it shows me 1 and negative 3. So this requires programming to get to that point, or making guesses. If you recall, we solved that equation and we got 1. Um, if I do, let's see initial guess of 5 here. Let's solve for x. And there I get the negative 3. So I'd have to guess and iterate until I got both roots. But you can program a quadratic function, so that's just a little bit extra work. Now, integration is a little bit different. So if I wanted to, inter both integrate numerically, they do not integrate symbolically. So if I wanted to integrate this equation here, let me just remove this equals zero. So I've got this expression, x squared plus two x minus three. Over on the 36 Pro, I'll go second, and then the integration, Let's say we want to integrate from 0 to 1, then enter an x. This is all your variables. You can cycle through them. But I just want x. x squared plus 2x minus 3. Hit enter, and it solves it. Over here, I've entered my equation, and I go back into my stack. I say I want to integrate from 0 to 1. Go back into equation, second integrate, integrate with respect to x. 
and we get the same answer. So very similar, although this is much more graphically based. This does not have a built-in derivative. This does. Uh, again, it would be an evaluation, a numerical evaluation of that derivative. But I've entered a program here that will do the same thing. It will take the derivative. Uh, complex numbers. So over here for complex numbers, if I wanted to enter in 5 plus j3, I do 5 plus, let's see if this will work, j3, and I do get that. I just had to cycle through this to get to the i. There's pi, e, and i. Over here, I would go 5, j3. I'm saying j, I mean i. I'm an engineer, sorry. So 5, i3. For polar notation, over here, I would enter in, let's say, 5 at angle 3. So I've got 5, and I can go to this theta, angle 3, hit enter, and I'm in rectangular mode, so it does switch over to rectangular when I display it. Over here, I'd have to go to the complex menu, and then pick this angle, and then 3, hit enter, I get the same value here. Here's a polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar conversion. Or you can change that in the, the display. I'm going to mode and changing your display here. And we have the polar notation. Same thing over here, display, and 10 is polar. So 5 theta 3, or 5 angle 3. Matrices. The HP35 does not do matrices. It does not take the determinant. It does not do matrix multiplication. You can enter a program for that. It's a very long program. The 36X Pro does handle matrices very well. Second matrix, tell it what you want. So I've got a 2 by 3. Let's edit this one. Oops. Matrix. Edit that. I tell it how many rows and columns. It only does up to three. Again, very graphical sort of menu. Then you enter in your matrix. Now, if I wanted to multiply matrices, I'm just going to do this as an example. I would have to go to matrix, uh, select which one I want, so A, and I have to go back to matrix, select the operation I want. Let's just multiply them. Then go back to matrix and select the second matrix. So sort of a iterative back and forth through the menus, picking what you want. Uh, this yeah won't do anything. So we've got zeros all in the first matrix. Vectors. So if I want to enter in a vector, I edit the vector. So this is a three-dimensional vector. Put in my values, one, two, three. Go to the other vector, so I had to go back to the vector menu, edit my second one, three-dimensional. Let's do three, two, one. Now I have to get out of this menu, go back to the vector menu, and I want the dot product of, go back to the vector menu, 1, hit comma, go back to the vector menu, 2, close parentheses, and hit answer. Over here on the 35S, I would do my brackets, and I'd do 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. That would be my first vector. And I do the same thing, brackets, 3, comma, 2, comma, 1. 
and then I would hit multiply to get the dot product. It's a lot faster over here on the 35S. You don't have to go back and forth through all the menus, but the 35S will only do the dot product or the magnitude of the vector. As you can see from the operations here, we can get the cross product and the, uh, the normal magnitude. So it does that for you. Cross product, again, I've entered a program that will do that on the 35S. <clears throat> I don't really like going back and forth digging into these menus over and over again in order to get that expression. The right, last thing I wanted to talk about was statistics. So here you go into your stat register. I'm sorry, that's your that's what you would actually do. To enter in the statistics is very easy. You can go and do a list. So I've got a set of numbers, let's say I've got 2, 3, 2, 4, 6, and those are all zeros. Let's just delete those. Oops. Alright, so now I've got items entered in here. Over here I would do two, and the summation, three, two, five, six. And those five values are all stored inside this summation register. So now I would look at the mean of the x's, the mean of the y's, which is really, doesn't mean anything because I haven't uh, put anything in the y's. So 3.6. Go back here, go to stat. Say I want to do one variable stats. Data list one. Say one. Calc. Um, number of items five. That's the same as the number of items we have here. 3.6 is the mean. The Uh, sample standard deviation 1.8, the population is 1.62, the summation of all of them, go here to my sums, is 18, uh, squared 78, the minimum value, so here's where the 36x, this has just summed them up and then done statistics on that. The 36x actually has those values in a list that you can go back and edit. You can't really edit them edit your list over here on the 35S. So your first quartile, median, this does not give you the median, third quartile, and your max. So very similar, most everything you would want to do the 35S does, except perhaps for the median. Um, the 36X Pro will give you that, and it has a very nice data entry. That's just a very quick overview there's much more that could be said on both calculators. Ultimately, I think if you want speed, the 35S will do it. If you want just to be able to graphically and sort of intuitively go through things, then the 36X Pro. You really need to know the 35S, like read the manual, understand all the equation or all the, the functions in order to be able to do it. Whereas the 36X Pro, you can kind of muck your way through most stuff, but there is a lot here too that, that it would be helpful to read the manual for.